Hello, I'm Dick Crow with Real Time with the IPC. We're here in San Diego, California at the IPEX APEX show. And our guest this morning is Tony Mattingly, yep. Senior Product Manager from Rogers Corporation. Yes. Uh, people probably know you as a laminate manufacturer, but That's correct. why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Rogers to start? Well, it depends on how far back you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Not too so, far, yeah. So Rogers has been yeah. around for 180 years. Yeah. Um, but you know, moving forward, we're we're basically comprised of three manufacturing or business units. So PES, which is a power electronic solutions division, um, selling like bus bar type materials uh -huh. into electric vehicles and whatnot. Um, ACS, which is the division I work for, uh -huh. um, which is advanced connectivity solutions. I'm just going to say, uh, Rogers, over the years, from my limited experience knowing your company, has innovated a, a lot of a lot of new products for a lot of new applications. So what's going on new now? Um, well, there's a lot, been a lot of you know technological shifts in the wireless infrastructure market over the past few years, especially with like the 5G um, technologies that are coming. Um, so a lot of the material needs and requirements are, are changing. Um, we've got a lot of market segment managers that are out there um, you know, doing some VOC with the, with the customer base and, and feeding that back to the organization. And then we work with our R&D teams to, to develop the products mm -hmm. that meet those requirements. So, so you're, you're best known as um, innovative high frequency special application materials or, that's, or that's are you in the traditional FR4 style market? Or what? We're, we're not, we stay away from the commoditized markets like FR4. Uh -huh. um, we are a specialty materials supplier uh -huh. and to the, to the high frequency um, markets and the high-speed digital markets. And that's growing, that's a growing market. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I read, uh, I guess just yesterday, where someone said that uh, 5G is going to come faster than what uh, they originally anticipated. Uh, are, are all the fundamentals in place, particularly the the, the framework or the, the substrates in place to do this? I, I think a lot of the frameworks are still being figured out. Um, some some places are a little bit more ahead of the curve than the others. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, especially in the on the shoreline of, of China, um, I see a lot of the, the technology shifting there first. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the, the active antenna systems and, and um, you know, the combining of, of components into mm -hmm. the base station antennas, mm -hmm. we, we're seeing mm -hmm. a lot of that, that happening there. And that, that all supports the 5G infrastructure. Yeah. You said you're not in the, what we would call the traditional F FR4 market, but you're in a, in a very innovative state. So you must be following a roadmap or following the technologies pretty closely to, to get to that point and have products ready. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about our portfolio growth um, over the past few years. Um, we've launched several several new products that are going to support this this, this growth. Um, a couple years ago, we launched an RL4730 G3 product, which is an antenna grade material, uh -huh. from flame retardant. Um, that seems to be you know a, a trend um, uh -huh. with all of the the um, you know, antenna devices, the the small cells and whatnot, going on to commercial uh -huh. buildings. And flame retardancy is important. Um, so that that material launched a couple years ago. Um, it won the new product introduction award this last year at this show. Um, and customers have done done, you know, good. I'm pretty excited about it. So there's been a good adoption there. And, and you have a, a technology center of some sort that you do a lot of testing and development work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. where, where is that located? Um, that's over on the East Coast in, uh -huh. in Connecticut. So we've got a, a high reliability or a reliability testing center there uh -huh. um, that does a lot of the mechanical um, work to make sure that you know the materials that we develop are going to work out at our customer base. Mm -hmm. Um, then back in, in Arizona, we've got an R&D center that uh -huh. that works on the, a lot of the, yeah. the manufacturing process. And you have facilities not only in Chandler, but in Belgium and also in China. That's correct. Uh -huh. yep. How many employees does Rogers uh, have now? Um, just shy of, of 3,000 across oh, the... You're a big, big company. Did, did I understand you correct saying your company's 180 years old? It's 180 years old, that's What correct. did you do before? Well, it was a paper manufacturer. Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it started yeah. as a paper manufacturer. Yeah, uh -huh. And always in Chandler? Uh, in Connecticut, that's where it started. Uh-huh, I see. Yeah, and, uh, oh, yeah, I guess I knew that, John. Yeah. And back in the, I want to say it was the 1950s, uh, the town that, that it was founded in actually became Rogers, Connecticut. So uh -huh. there's, a, there's a town named after Rogers. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So, so we know that you're developing products for 5G applications, high-frequency applications, so forth. What's beyond that? Beyond 5G. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 6G, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 6G. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a mirror product manager focusing <laughs> on two or five years. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've, we've got a, you know, an innovation center. Um, we've partnered with Northeastern University on the East Coast, and there's a whole team there that's looking at you know, that, that five-year and beyond yeah. um, material needs. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure there's a roadmap. 
oh, yeah. already be oh, on yeah. that, John. You're, you're following that. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 what Rogers is known for, is being the innovative Innovate. company yeah. out there. So. Yeah. yeah, well, very interesting. It's a, certainly a dynamic business that we're in. It doesn't seem that way sometimes, but uh, when you talk to people like yourselves, you know you know what you're doing, and it's a very interesting. 5G, of course, we've been all waiting on 5G because that's supposed to be the cure-all of everything, but we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. see. Anything else you'd like to address while we're, while we're here? No, no, I'm just, uh, we're pretty excited about, you know, the new products that we've got out, out at our booth. So, you know, uh -huh. we've got a product that we launched this, this last month called um, RL4460 G2, which is a set bomb ply uh -huh. um, that complements our RL4360 G2 mm -hmm. um, laminate. And what's, what's exciting about this product, it brings to our portfolio a, a 6.15 DK bomb ply. Um, the, there's an interest there. So as mm -hmm. we, as we move towards 5G um, and just, 4G and, and whatnot, the, the wireless infrastructure changes that we're seeing. You know, a lot of the components are being moved up the base station tower, um, so the space is becoming very constrained. Weight is an issue. Yeah, so, yeah. historically, that's all been in the 3DK range. Yeah. Um, you know, with this product launch, we now have a material solution for for a higher DK product where you can shrink. And that's that's what the higher DK allows. Mm -hmm. It allows di designers to shrink the circuitry. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. It's had some pretty good interest so far. Um, it's only been you know four weeks since we launched it, but we've had approximately ten large OEMs that are building power amplifiers. I'm already sampling wow. it. And, well, I have to ask you so. then, um, from a lamination perspective, is this high temperature stuff that we that we it is, yeah, it it is. is. yeah, yeah. All, all the materials got got good uh, thermal conductivity. Six fifty to seven hundred degrees Fahrenheit in that range. Um, yeah, lower. A lower, lower, lower than, than that. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Anything else you'd like to say? No. Okay. Well, it's been an interesting uh, discussion here about, about Laminus because this is the way that uh, things, things are certainly going in our industry. So I'm Dick Crow, and this has been Real Time with the IPC here in San Diego. Thanks for watching.